I'm kidding. We're not done. So, we got to talk about the introduction. So, why does Kinkel set up the book with this introduction, with his, you know, um, with his um, story about growing up um, under communism, right? Okay, already, like, between communism and capitalism, the Cold War, um, the first, second world, um, kind of major scuffle. From the get-go, he's saying that this is ultimately a political thing. Like, this is a political book, right? Um, uh, that media is political. It's, it's just, again, I can't, I can't stress that, you know, at this point, just, I mean, I guess I'm just repeating what I've, things I've already said. It's like, media is not apolitical. It's not neutral, right? So there, but the politics here are implied, right? There's a kind of, um, like, it's funny. Like, I just want you to, like, kind of appreciate this for a moment, is that, like, um, He's, 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 there's a, there's a, a differentiation happening, right, in a book about YouTube, right, and he's talking about how terrible his experience was, which I have no doubt was terrible, right, but, but it's, it's the framing, the rhetorical framing, right, um, and how, how much of a, um, departure this is from the experience of his children, of his daughters, right, so, you know, we're bringing in children as well, right? Um, and how great their experience is because they're living under liberal democratic capitalism, right? And so it's like, how do I put it? He's basically taking the the, the company that he works for, Google's YouTube, it's like Sid Meier's Civilization, it's Google's YouTube, and he's wrapping it up in all of this and he's contra-distinguishing it from this and all of the terrible things about this. Do you see what I'm getting at? So it's not just that YouTube is just a company that does a service. It has fundamentally to do with a brighter future for children and all of the freedom that comes under living in this place as opposed to this place. That's how it's becoming political, right? This is a nationalist but it's really not, it's, it's less about like America as a nation state and so much more about the sort of ideological charges that we associate with all of this as opposed to all of that, right? Now, he makes a claim on 10, which I think is another ideological and sort of ludicrous claim. And just again, keep in mind, like, what is uh, Robert Kinkle? He's a, he's a business executive. What are all the, the authors that we've read so far? They are professional researchers of media. They are scholars, right? But on page 10, let me just pull it up. On X, X. Um, where is it? Sorry. Where is it? Oh, uh, that second full paragraph, the first few lines. In less than one generation, we've reached a point where what we watch, read, and listen to is no longer determined solely by states or corporate monopolies, but by us. Us. You. Me. Us. Right? What's the distinction? So we have states implied communist states, right? As opposed to his childhood and corporate monopolies, right? They are not determining um, uh, what media is being produced and, and consumed, but us. Who the hell is us? And, okay, so... Robert Kinkle. Um, I don't see his net worth, but number 30 on the Power 100 of Billboard in the top variety 
500 of the top 500 entertainment business executives probably makes more than all of us combined. I don't know how much I feel like I'm in the same boat as Robert Kinkle, right? That's one. Number two. Is this factually, actually supported? That that media, the media that is produced and viewed, is so. Let's not be facetious and say when he says us, he means uh, consumers, right? Um, the actual audiences. Do you and I actually dictate what's produced and consumed? Is that is that evidence uh, 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 sort of? apparent in all of the research that we've read so far for, for 12 weeks, for 10 weeks. I'm just going to say it, like at this point in the semester, like this is just not true. Like of course it's still, you know, um, uh, might, well maybe that's how he gets out of it. They're not monopolies, right? Like, you know, it's a, uh, um, it's just a, a small number of companies as opposed to one company. But to say that it's that it's consumers and audiences that have that have the the power in terms of all this, it's like that's just it's just not true. <laughs> um, okay. So what is his promise from from ten to eleven, x to x one, right? His promise is is basically that. Um, all of us, you know, have the freedom to all become like celebrities, right? So, so it's it's a cult of personality, right? Like he names all these names, and then he basically says like, what what YouTube allows is for all of us to kind of ascend and go to YouTube cella, right? That that's what might happen. On eleven, uh, three paragraphs in. About midway, he says, Now, as the chief business officer of YouTube, my job is to help bring information and entertainment to over a billion people around the world, including many in countries where governments try to limit that access. So, two. So, again, how, what is he, what, what is the, rhetorically, what is he saying? His job is bringing entertainment, one. So, his job is to um, deliver content to you and me. But also, there's the sort of diversity global kind of talking point all over the world. Third, to go back to the way that he sets the chapter up, there's the kind of um, the ideological warfare that he's fighting the good fight of resisting kind of totalitarian and fascist government that would limit access, right? It's like YouTube doesn't limit access, it's the governments that limit, limit access, right? Now, this is his own job description. Do you think when he gets up um, day in and day out, or, or when he, like behind closed doors, this is like first and foremost his priority? Or let me put it this way. Does this come over, like, if this has to be kind of measured against, for example, um, something like the profit margin or the bottom line, do you think this takes priority over, over that? That's the big question that I'm asking. This is really kind of what I'm, like, all of us, all of us are constantly sort of measuring and balancing and prioritizing. I think we have to think about that critically. What is our priority? You know, right now, I think your priority should be your health and well-being. That's fine. You know, that's how it should be. Um, I, I think right now, it's like, it, it's, it, you know, collectively, we have to think about what are our priorities. And to me, like, the priority should be that people are dying, that people at risk are dying. That should come for first and foremost. And if not, like, if that's not your priority, we have to say that, right? We just have to explicitly say, my priority, like, I just don't, I care other, about other things than people dying. That's, you know, like, you know, that, that's, that's your cross to bear. But similarly, like, you know, um, do what people say are their priorities actually line up with the way that they behave? That's really, like, the question that I'm kind of trying to ask here. Right. Okay, 
Um, in terms of rhetoric, uh, his rhetoric, just to get into it a little bit more, I'm just going to say, don't write like this. Um, don't write like this. Or, I mean, to, to, to kind of uh, qualify that, when you're writing a critical research paper or trying to produce new knowledge, don't write like this. If you're writing something that's more personal, um, um, something else, that's different, right? On 12x2, um, so like, just to, to look at look look at some of the lines that he uses. To, so you and I, again, when he talks about the general YouTube using public, what is he going to describe us as? Do you think? You know, we've 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 heard words like viewer, user, users, even. Um, audiences, do you really think he's going to refer to us as a generation of auteurs and entertainers? You and I, we're doing the good work of bringing entertainment and art to each other. Um, I call these trailblazers a few lines later. Steam, stream punks, right? Yeah, they're out there bla blazing trails. You know, bring art, right? I'm doing that right now because I have my own YouTube channel. Blazing a trail, I'm a stream punk. I'm a stream punk. Streaming, and I'm punk because I got spiky hair, right? Right beneath that, block quote, I didn't write this book to provide an origin story about YouTube. I didn't write it to paint another corporate portrait of a Silicon Valley upstart that's trying to disrupt an industry or rewrite the rules. That's exactly what he's doing. He's calling. The well, he's doing it, but he's getting away with it by saying it's not about the people at YouTube. It's about you. It's about me. It's about the content. We are the ones that are breaking the rules. We write the rules now. I wrote it because I wanted to tell the story of an incredibly talented collection of creators and entrepreneurs who've used YouTube to do amazing things. This is for you. It's all for you. Above all. I hope I'm able to create something that connects with audiences, entertains them, and makes them feel part of a growing movement. After all, stream prunks do that every day. I'm sure that's absolutely what, at the end of the day, he's interested in. On, uh, yeah. So we'll move on to the actual chapter. But yeah, stream punks, you and me, we're in it together. <laughs> 